Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Belgium once again. We're going to go to Bruges this time and this is another brewery who I've never tried anything from but I have seen them around a little bit. So for this one we're going to go to Brauerei de Halfman which translates into English as the Half Moon Brewery and today we're having a taste of one of the beers from their Staffa Hendrik range. So this one is the Staffa Hendrik Quadruple. It comes in at 11% ABV and it should be a really nice one this. Overall on rate beer this guy had a 96 and it was a 98 within that um, within that quadruple style so it should be a really interesting beer with this one one thing I didn't know about this brewery before I did the research for the video was that these guys also produce the Zot beers as well which are the ones with the little jesters on them you would know them in the shops if you saw them but I thought that was really cool when I was researching this brewery and what you'll also find with this uh, brewery as well is that when you look at the history of it there's four generations of Henry's actually been involved in this one so we'll talk about that in a minute in the history history section of the video but a very interesting brewery this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this particular beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website link to my other reviews that I've done from Brauerei de Halfman before this is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers though so there will be more in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the belgian beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Brauerei de Halfman then so as i mentioned to you earlier Brauerei de Halfman trans translates into English as the Half Moon Brewery and this is a family owned company located in Bruges in Belgium. So the first mention of this brewery comes from 1564 when the city register already mentioned Brarai de Mena on the Valpine Square in the city. But in 1856 Henry Leon Mays became the owner of the building with the help of his uncle Petrus Johannes Mays and this brewery was then converted into a modern operation and became known as Brarai de Half Man. And as I was mentioning at the start of the video this is the first of a couple of Henrys that actually took over the the brewery so that was Henry the first so Henry the first sons uh, Henry the second and Archer took over the brewery in 1867 and they erected a malt house and brewed some English styles of beers this was because one of them had actually studied in England a little bit about brewing things so they brought the styles back with them and they continued to increase production in the 1880s but in 1905 though both Henry and Archer died at a young age and their widows continued to the, continued the brewery until one of their sons Henry the third took over in 1919 and he actually went to Germany to study brewing and then introduced German style beers into the brewery and also refrigeration as well because there was a key difference between the um the German and the Belgian beers. The German ones were using bottom fermenta fermenting yeast which need refrigeration for their, uh, their fermentation while the Belgian ones were using high, uh, they were using what they call high fermentation or top fermenting yeast which don't need the refrigeration of course so it was quite important that they introduced these ones and they were producing Bock beers and also lagers at that time during the 1930s and they were also producing some soft drinks at that time as well but in 1946 they also took over Brauerei Bruges Seehaven which gave them a really large brewing complex to work with. So Henry IV took over the brewery during the 1950s and they began to experience major growth but the brewery began to really suffer in the 1970s due to the changes in the consumer market and in 1981 Henry started to work with his daughter Veronique and they brewed a high fermentation beer or a top fermentation beer to mark the unveiling of the statue of St Arnold in the city who was the patron saint of brewers and this beer was called Staffa Hendrik and it was to pay homage basically the name of it was to pay homage to the four different generations of Henry Mayers who had run uh, the Brauerei de Half Man. So Brauerei Riva took over the brand and the trading of the Staffa Hendrik beers in 1988 and over time production in Bruges was reduced and eventually they completely moved it to Dentigiem in 2002. But Veronique's son Javier Vanaste resurrected the brewery and launched the Bruges Zot beers which proved to be very very popular. As I was mentioning earlier these are the ones that have the little kind of court jester on them. But after the Leafman's brewery in Dentigiem filed for bankruptcy in 2007 the ownership of the Staffa Hendrik brand was actually owned by Duvel Murkgaard for a short time but a deal was concluded in 2008 to purchase the brand and they started brewing the original Staffa Hendrik Trippel once again and the Quadrupel, this beer here, was launched in 2010 the same year that the brewery opened their bottling and logistics centre at Vagelwater Business Park and that is where the biggest part of their operation is actually based today, just on the outskirts 
of Bruges. But yeah, um, really interesting company, this one. It is cool to see that it's it's a truly family brewery, this one, uh, which I think is really cool. And it is kind of interesting as well. I do like that, that they had four generations of Henry Mayers actually running this company. And they decided then to name one of the beers after them. So really interesting history, this one. I always enjoy researching these things for you. So if you want to read a little bit more about that, I've just summarised it for you. But check out the brewery website and you'll find that in the description below. And you can follow them on Facebook and things like that and keep up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery. They're quite an interesting company, these guys, like I said. But that's all you need to know about them just now. So let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So yeah, just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. As I said to you, this one is an 11% Tripel beer. There you can see the half moon, the crescent moon at the top there. That is also on the bottle cap, incidentally. You've got a little um, kind of top label on this one. The other stuff of Hendrik beer that you get is the Quad Rupel. I've got a feeling there might be another one that they produce as well, but on the bottom there you can see it says 11 degrees, which basically means 11%. Uh, different, of course, from the Czech ones that you've seen me reviewing recently. They put, you know, like 15 degrees for 7% and stuff like this, but there you can see on the bottom uh, Belgian beer in all the different languages. Beer Belge, Beer Belge uh, and Belgian beer in English, of course. So, yeah, really nicely presented beer, this one. So, without further ado, let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and then really looking forward to this. Nice little bit of a smoky opening then and we'll get it out and into the glass. As I always say, when you're pouring Belgian beers, do be a little bit careful with them because the bottle conditioning can make the head in the beers just go a little bit crazy. So let's take this just slowly and there we go. That's kind of the level of head you would want from a nice Belgian beer. So, even if I do say so myself, that was a pretty nice pour. But yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect with this one, it's poured a nice, dark, kind of mahogany colour. Um, if I hold this one up to the light, it's actually got a hell of a lot of a kind of ruby colour to it. And you're probably not going to be able to see this on the camera, but there's a lot of carbonation, there's a lot of big bubbles going up towards the bottom of that head there. You can maybe just see around this side of the glass, there's quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. Incidentally, the head is about two and a half fingers, and I would say it's quite a nice beigey colour there, but yeah, one or two bigger bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass as well, um, and just a, quite a lot, as I say, when you hold it up to the light, you can really see there's a lot of carbonation going up towards the bottom of that head. On the camera, this beer is appearing as if it's like a quite dark, sort of rosewoody, ebony colour, but if you put the light, if you stick the light through it, it's a nice kind of, um, it's actually quite a nice dark sort of a ruby colour. It's almost the same as a kind of doppelbock. If you put a doppelbock in one of these nice big um, German dimpled mugs, it's almost the kind of the same colour as that. But yeah, nice looking beer, this one. When you open it up as well, you do get a really nice kind of um, toasted brown caramel, almost a little bit kind of a a wafer sort of thing uh, coming out of the aroma of this beer. But let's take a closer look at it then and just see how we get on. Yeah. So with this beer, as you would expect from the Belgian beers, the pinnacle of the Belgian beers, that big doughy bready yeast. It's quite a, a, a brown bready quality that comes out of this one. So you've got a nice sort of um, toasted darker caramel in there. It's not quite treacle or anything like that. It is a, a straight up caramel, this one. There's a nice little bit of a, a sort of biscuity note to this beer as well, which is, is interesting. And there's definitely some kind of honeycomb qualities as well. There's definitely an element of honey to this beer too but quite toasted, like I was saying. Nice big doughy um, brown bready notes. There's almost a little bit of a kind of nutty, and I want to say there's a bit of a woody um, aroma to this beer as well. Oddly enough, there is... When I smell this beer, the way that the brown sugar is coming out in this one, it actually does remind me a little bit of like a German Dunkel or a, a Doppelbock. It's got... The way the caramelly notes are coming out in this one really does remind me of that, so... I would wonder, actually, if they maybe have used a little bit of a German malt in there or something like that. But then again, there are a lot of malt houses in Belgium, so I might be talking absolute rubbish with that. But this is the first Belgian beer that I've come across where it's the malt that really has had a little bit of that German kind of quality to it. And, but there is a bit of German heritage in this brewery with the brewery notes, like I was saying. They have um, brewed German-style beers before, which, you know, that may well be something. But yeah, it's almost got, when you sugar this beer up a little bit, it's almost got a little bit of that kind of medicinal um, sort of quality to it, that cough syrupy note as well. 
but the way the malt comes out in this, it really does remind me, just the, the, just the type of sugary aromas you have in this one, it really does remind me a little bit of a Doppelbock. If it wasn't for that kind of big Belgian yeast that's in there, you know, you could be mis you could be forgiven for mistaking this for being like a Doppelbock on a blind smell. But yeah, with this one as well, there's a little touch of a kind of earthy hop, I would think. There is a little bit of a note from the earthy hops. And you can pick up a little bit of a red fruity quality from this one. I want to say it's a little bit figgy. It's not quite um, kind of candied or uh, or sharp enough to be like plums or raisins or something like that. For me, it's quite a figgy note. And there is almost just a little bit of a medicinal quality. But overall, the aroma for me really leans towards those brown sugars and the kind of brown bready notes that I was talking about earlier. But yeah, it does smell like a, a really quite nice beer, this one. So as I always say... Take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But we're going to try this one. So this one is the Staffa Hendrik Quadruppel from Brauerei de Halfman in Bruges over in Belgium. Let's have a taste of this beer. Slange Skull Proust Santé. Yeah. It's a nice beer, that. Have a go at this for yourself and see what you think. Yeah. Mmm. Right, so this one. The, 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 again, I, I was, as I was saying, I was picking up in the aroma. The brown sugars. The way the brown sugars come out in this beer are quite... Um, are really quite different actually compared to some of the other tripels that I've had before. This one is a little bit more toasted and roasted and again flavours that come out of this that, that for me just in terms of the flavour of this beer there is something just a little bit German about it. A lot of Belgian beer enthusiasts might not be happy about me saying that right enough but the way that the malty quality comes out in this one it really does remind me a little bit of Doppelbox and um, and what do you call it and uh, Dunkels and stuff like that. Both styles, of course, which I do love. <laughs> I love my I love my quadruples and my triples, but I do love my German Doppelbox and Dunkels as well. There is just there's just something about this beer in terms of the brown sugar nose that makes it quite unique. So for this one, for me, malt base of this beer, you can feel that nice um, brown bready quality that just blankets the middle of your palate there, and you can feel on top of that there is a little bit of that thicker kind of doughy, bready, yeasty sort of thing. But this beer for me isn't quite as heavy in terms of that that kind of doughy, bready quality as some of the other Belgian ones that I've had. There's a nice brown sugary note right in the middle of your palate. You can feel there's quite a thick um, caramelly note to this beer. As you go further out towards the edge of the tongue, there's it, it becomes a little bit more honey-like. There's a little bit of a honeycomb kind of thing there, and just right out towards the edge of the tongue, there's a little bit of that kind of McVitie's digestive sort of thing with this beer. It is really nice, this, how everything goes together in this one. But for me, the brown sugars in this beer are distinctively more kind of toasty. And it really, the, the way they come out in this one does remind me quite a bit of the, the Doppelbox and the, and the Dunkels, like I was saying. Yeah, I just, I love how everything's going together in this one. This one is a really, um, really quite nice beer. And I mean, the Belgians are, you know, the Belgium's one of these countries. They've got that terrific brewing heritage over there. And I always like it how you can go around these quite famous, well-known breweries and with each of these different beers, you can pick out just those little distinctive things. With this one, as you kind of move further forward um, on the front of the tongue, I think there's an element of a, a sort of woody flavour to this one. It's almost a little bit kind of oaky. On top of that, there's a nice um, little bit of a nutty um, quality to the beer as well, right in the centre. Um, Behind the front, behind where you would normally find the fruity flavours, there is just a little bit of a nutty flavour sitting on top of that and a kind of woody base to the beer, which is, is really, really nice. Yeah. I like, I just, I like how everything in that malt base kind of goes together with the beer. It's really, really nice. On the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice, smooth earthiness to this beer. There is a little bit of a herbal quality in there. And um, like I was saying, in the aroma, you can pick up this almost 
slightly medicinal kind of uh, thing about this beer and as you go across to the palate to the sides of your palate to get the hoppy flavours a little bit of that kind of um, comes out as well but as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue that er the earthiness is there at the back then the herbal quality just kind of spreads forward a little bit there's a wee touch of floral um, aromatic uh, aromaticity on the front corners of your palate then round the very front curve of the tongue it's just a little bit lighter and uh, grassy again there is a, a slight touch of a, a herbal quality in there too though but overall as I say this um, you know is just a really really quite nice beer this one I like how everything goes together in it but behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that little oily bubble where those nice juicy fruity qualities start to come out of the beer and for me this one again you've got that almost cough syrupy me medicinal quality to this one so there's a wee bit of a, there's definitely a kind of candied red fruit flavour to this beer. It's almost a little bit kind of figgy in things as well, which is interesting. Yeah, definitely um, that medicinal quality to this beer is really interesting. It's got a little bit of a sultana element to it as well. There's almost a little bit of like a... I don't know, a dried peach or something like that to this beer, or a dried apricot. There is definitely a dried kind of fruity element to this beer and some red fruit. Definitely figs in there, definitely sultanas, I would say, as well. But there is a sort of dried apricot note to that beer, and that really um, kind of blends in quite well with the herbal qualities of the beer that I was talking about as well. But overall, like I say, in terms of flavour, it's a really nice quadruple, this one. It's a bit darker than some of the other ones that I've had. It's a bit less heavy in terms of the kind of breadiness of the beer as well but it definitely covers the alcohol well i would say i mean 11 percent the way the brown sugars uh, kind of come out in this beer is really what stands out to me and in terms of the aftertaste it's some of that medicinal quality that's sitting there a little bit of the herbal flavor too and the kind of nice biscuity kind of almost wafery brown sugar uh, flavors coming out of this beer but overall really really nicely done and i'm glad that um, i was able to have a taste of this beer in terms of the mouthfeel then definitely i would say i think was it full bodied yeah full bodied beer this one carbonation it does have quite a bit of crispness to it this beer and um, that may well be because of the age of it, the date that's on the bottle of this one is 2021. Usually I think they give you about five years for the Belgian beer. So I would be guessing that this beer was maybe bottled in early 2016. So it's been in the bottle um, about a year and a half, 18 months, something like that. Um, so yeah, maybe that's the, that's maybe just due to the, the bottle conditioning of the beer. The carbonation, I would say, is quite active in this one. The mouthfeel overall is really quite oily in that, but it does suit that and that helps bring out some of these brown sugar flavours that I was talking about. Not really much hoppy bitterness to this one. The hoppy qualities of this beer are quite smooth. The malt base is quite sweet. It does have a little bit of a darker kind of toasted quality to it rather than anything and um, there is a as I say there is a bit of sweetness the bready qualities aren't too amplified in this one and there's a nice little bit of juicy fruit to the beer as well but overall a really really nice beer and I'm glad that um, I was able to review this for you it's, I've seen this beer around quite a lot and I'm glad that I was finally able to have a taste of it for you but I think this for me this one's quite interesting because the brown sugars in this beer really come out in a way and um, that's quite similar to the German Doppel box and uh, and Dunkels for me so I really like this one this one for me is just a little bit special in that regard and as I always say you can go around these Belgian tripels and uh, quadrupels and you can pick out all these little kind of unique points about them but for me I like this one and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again so yeah let's leave it at that so this one was the Staff of Hendrik quadrupel from Brauerei de Hafen and the Half Man Brewery in Bruges over in Belgium. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next thing, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Half Man Brewery as well. Hopefully I can review some of the beers from the Zot range at some point as well. And I'm sure I will review the Staffa Hendrik Triple for you soon. But thank you again for watching. Make sure you check out all my social media and things in the description below. And I will catch you guys very soon. This was the Staffa Hendrik uh, Quadrupel from the Half Man Brewery over in Bruges in Belgium. A really nice beer. And uh, I certainly enjoyed reviewing this one. Until the next time, stand just now. And I will catch you guys very soon. Proust, santé.